Before we start, I want you to wait for a sec. Think about your favorite game. What is it? For some of you, it could be the latest multiplayer shooter, or a nostalgic collectathon you played as a child. But for the longest time, while I liked games ever since I was a child, and while I did have a list of games that I liked, nothing ever really took the number one spot until I was around 20 years old. At first, for a bit, it was the world ends with you, but as I have gotten older and things have shifted in my age, it quickly became a game that came out a few years later for the PSP. ZHP Zetai Hero Project The Unlosing Ranger vs. Dark Death Evil Man. Today we are going to go over why this is my favorite game of all time, while trying to avoid spoilers as much as possible. This is a story about a character, that no matter how many times he falls, he gets back up again. Sure, every game you played could be taken as an example, but very few games make it a part of their story and try to marry the concept of the gameplay back into it and attempt to make it fun, quirky, and inspiring at the same time. This game does that. One of the first games to my knowledge, I know what game you're thinking of and this one predates that one by a couple of years. Want to hear more about it? Let's have a chat then. The Hook. The year is 2010 and I am sick as a dog. The online PSP store is littered with the new games and out of the corner of my eye is the name of a certain developer, Nipponichi Software America. Their newest release on the PSP just launched. Its title, CHP Zetai Hero Project, The Unlosing Ranger vs. Dark Death Evil Man. Laughing at the absurdly long title, and loving their previous releases on the PSP, such as Disgaea 1, 2, and Prinny, Can I Really Be the Hero? I go online to check some trailers and am instantly sold by the concept. I pull out my debit card and make a purchase and wait for the game to download over the shitty Wi-Fi. I wouldn't know that the game I was about to play would change my life. Or maybe that's what the cold medicine made me feel at the time until I would get to replay the game again recently. Detai Hero Project is a standalone title, a rogue light game by Nipponichi Software, featuring a battle starring the titular characters, the Unlosing Ranger, and Dark Death Evil Man. For those unaware, a rogue light is a much easier, more accessible, and approachable version of a rogue like. Games that tend to feature permadeath, bagged item loss, hours of grinding, hunger meters, random dungeons, and other such conventions. Zetai Hero Project has a lot of these conventions, but eases the player into them over time, and is generally more approachable than a traditional roguelite at the time. Differentiated by its stored level system, a system that stores levels into the Unlosing Ranger at the completion of a dungeon or upon death. These stored levels increase the Unlosing Ranger's base stats, at level 1, feeding into the gameplay loop and generally making your character feel more overpowered. At this point, I should add that in Japanese, the title is called Zetai Hero Kaizo Kaikaku, or transliterally, Absolute Hero Modding Project. And the Unlosing Ranger is referred to as the Make Ranger, a pun off the Japanese word Makenai, or Never Give Up, and the English word Make, as in to create something referring to the game's many ways of modifying the main character into your own personal brand of hero, and the main character's journey himself, as he goes from being a total nobody to becoming the absolute victory on Losing Ranger. At the start of the game, you are greeted with a disclaimer. This game has only one battle sequence. Thank you for your understanding. However, it will be one huge epic battle. Thank you for your understanding. Before going off into a short spiel about the backstory of the game you're about to play, Admittedly, this caught me off guard initially. The game has a lot of roguelike action, but the one huge epic battle sequence is interspersed between the story cutscenes and evolves over time as the main character progresses in both his pursuit of personal strength and plot. The game starts off with the final battle of the century. The newscaster goes into depth about the unlosing ranger and dark death evil man's capabilities. The demon general himself has captured Super Baby putting the world at risk, and we see the Unlosing Ranger book it to the fight scene mid-transformation before being hit by a car, picking up his morphing belt and handling, handing it to an innocent bystander. 
The Unlosing Ranger pleads for him to take his belt. Our main character is given the option to accept or refuse, but either way, you are given the belt and head to the final fight right away, ready to take on the final boss. A battle sequence shows the disparity between your powers, and you are absolutely trounced immediately, and the game ends. However, there exists another Earth where fodder characters and bosses roam. The Bizarro Earth, an Earth that is intrinsically linked with our world, but looks completely different. Turns out, you were saved by the last minute by the World Hero Society, and now have to undergo training in order to beat the final boss. This is the setting where most of the gameplay portion of the game takes place. A simple explanation for why the randomized roguelike dungeons exist, why the story is progressed through them, and how your actions in this world affect the real world. This may seem like a cop-out at first, but it immediately becomes apparent how smart this approach is in the wider context of the theme the game is going for within the first couple of hours. In regards to the story, the comedy of this game is really strong, especially if you're familiar with Japanese and American media. While it does contain some referential points, you'll be happy to hear that most of the comedy is original and doesn't rely much on any pre-existing knowledge the player may have as a crutch. This is not a Ready Player One or MCU scenario. It is a very enclosed game, and even if some references were probably localized, such as the references to Uncle Ben's with great power comes great responsibility, to a reference to an obscure cooking anime that sounds like it could be a reference to Chuka Ichiban, but doesn't quite seem to be as a stranger, your guide through Bizarro Earth, tells you, uh, There was that one guy that became a big food expert all the while fighting against his dad. But I can't be bothered to research too hard into it, as in Chuka Ichiban, the protagonist Mao's father is supposedly dead. And that would require me to watch an entire anime to see if this was the case or not. After all, I want to talk about my favorite game, not about a random cooking anime. Alongside you, Tranger, you meet your guardian spirit, Pirohiko Ijimonji, an extremely talkative and nerdy ghost that looks suspiciously like the unlosing ranger that was recently killed in the hidden run you just witnessed. Together, these two will act as bickering good cop, bad cop, angel, devil, on shoulder as guides for your training as the Unlosing Ranger. And I wouldn't have it any other way. The energy that Kate Higgins and Kyle Herbert bring to the table are fantastic. They're, these two never get along. They almost always bicker or take pot shots at each other, and I'm here for it. This is probably the part where I guess I could go more into depth with the story. But I think I will save that for a later in, on in the review. I won't go over a synopsis of each chapter, as I find it extremely annoying when YouTubers do that, but I will go over some key parts that may spoil some later parts of the story for you. So when we reach that time, it'll be up to you to continue or not. However, I would say most of the energy this game has comes in the form of comedy, and too much spoiled out of context jokes are far worse for your enjoyment of the game than spoilers, but I'll keep it brief. As with most roguelike and roguelite games, the main gameplay elements you will be experiencing are either story elements or dungeon crawling, the later making up the bulk of your training. The controls are fairly easy. A is to attack. The directional buttons let you move on a grid. You can press X to cast or activate special attacks, equip or use items, pick up and throw things, or check your stats. Equipment makes you stronger in some areas and may weaken you in others. At a certain stored level, you may not even need to equip weapons early on in the dungeon unless absolutely necessary. As you make your way through the dungeon, a hunger meter drops over time. This meter will allow you to naturally heal as long as it's full. However, if it drops to zero, you will gradually take damage until you either starve or eat or are defeated. Your various equipment can grant you effects and special attacks that you can cost for a cost. Casting takes EN from your hunger meter, and is usually somewhat ranged in effect or has AOE damage to compensate. Storing your special move for future use and allowing you to use dispatch enemies before encountering them, or at least heavily damaging them, 
These moves are especially useful for Potter characters, mid bosses you may encounter, stronger than average enemies with the same special skill range, damage output, and equipment at loadout as the Unluging Ranger. As you traverse through the different dungeons, certain gimmick traps unseen to the naked eye will stop you from moving forward, damage you, confuse you, launch you, drop your items, or otherwise impede your progress somewhat. The gimmick changes throughout the various dungeon story mode, but the tiered mystery dungeons are randomized based on difficulty of the dungeon. As you progress through a dungeon, you will inevitably encounter the dungeon boss, each with their own special gimmick, separate from the gimmick you just encountered in the dungeon. These bosses can sometimes get even harder during your second playthrough, as the lose conditions become more apparent, netting you alternate endings that could result in an early game over, and a trip back to chapter 1. But these scenes can also be funny and sometimes worth witnessing. As you progress, facilities will be opened in your secret base that will allow you to take advantage of various new features, such as full body morphing. Basically, it stores an armor set in your base, preferably at 100% condition, that can be deployed at any time in a pinch like emergency situations. The traveling smith will fix your gear for you. Your wife will store your items and make you lunch or delivery which can take an item back to your home if you have too many in your pouch, just to name a few. The base and its inhabitants are fully customizable. You can also gain new inhabitants with better stats from the tiered mystery dungeons out of the main story. Then you have the body shadowgram modification. Basically, there's a facility that allows you to have up to two shadowgrams with different loadouts. It's very similar to the Navi customizer in the Mega Man Battle Network series, albeit different. You have a grid that represents your body, and these hero chakra points that have energy flowing in various directions. You can use this energy and harness it to power up your mods, such as containers to hold more items, or arm parts to punch up your physical attack stat. Within this shadowgram is the ability to put various equipment, regardless of the condition, in your loadout to change your base stats. This equipment then becomes unusable. The equipment will always give the same base stat totals all the time and can be collected in form to increase your stats to new heights. You could, theoretically, just collect speed and physical attack equipment, and then mold yourself into a powerful blink tank glass cannon, dodging enemy attacks left and right and dealing unbeatable damage every turn. Or if you like ranged attacks, like guns and stabs, you could focus on ranged attack power instead. The Presentation This game has an art direction different from the usual Disgaea-esque style you see in most Nishiponichi software titles also coming across as somewhat childish yet cool compared to the dark planar-esque style of Takahiro Harada and Skaya. The CG art is credited to a lot of artists, which I'll name a couple, such as Takashi Suzuki, Ryo Fujikawa, Yuki Okizaki, and Takayuki Okada. The music is by a myriad of composers, including Masaharu Iwata, Manabu Namiki, just to name a few, and ranges from the heroic to the mischievous. While not every track is an earworm, special attention to detail was given in particular to the Unlosing Ranger's theme song, which changes depending on the various equipment you have while in the mysterious dungeon segments of the game.
The Turning Point. At this point, we're going to go over the story and spoiler stuff, so if you don't want to be spoiled about the game, you can end your run here. However, if you're like me, and spoilers tend to only make you a bit more excited because sometimes it isn't the story itself that surprises you, but the character and interactions along the way that affect your enjoyment, then you'll be glad to know I'll be keeping things to a bare minimum. In trigger warning, we are going to go over an instance of child neglect. When we first left off the Unlosing Ranger, he lost. He found himself picking up the pieces after his defeat at the hands of Dark Death Evil Man and Bizarro Earth, in an effort to become stronger, each defeat bringing him more and more base strength with his determination. As you progress through the game, you get a sense of just how profound your first loss was, and what effect it had on the citizens of the world, each time inspiring those around you, as every time you lose or die, you just get up and again to fight. You inspire an old man, a down on his luck underdog, the mother of Super Baby, the President of the United States, you stop a nuclear missile, and you even manage to save a number of people thanks to inspiring a surgeon, just to name a few instances. The point this game really turned for me from a game I was just playing that was inspiring for the most part into my favorite is when the main character finds himself helping his family. We, the player, and his two companions, Pirohiko and a stranger, are introduced to the reason why he keeps standing up to fight, but also the reason why he's so reserved and held back. One day, back when they were much younger, the main character and his sister Choko were kidnapped by a cannibalistic monster. No one knew where they went, and so the parents were naturally worried. Back at the monster's lair, the main character kept standing up to save Choko, getting beaten down each time, and standing up over and over, buying time. The unlosing ranger finally came and saved the kids at the cost of his own life. He gave the belt to a cop, Pirohiko Ichimonji, and entrusted the title of unlosing ranger to him. Claiming the title of absolute victory, Pirohiko vowed that the unlosing ranger would never lose again. The title of unlosing ranger passes on to those who would be able to help hold justice even when the previous unlosing rangers have died. This gave the unlosing ranger the appearance that he was immortal. Turns out your family, however, in the trauma, forgot this valuable lesson, instead blaming and ridiculing the main character for being lazy or stupid, too weak and twitchy, for being beaten up by the monster. Your nemesis, troublemaker hero, made them forget to the point of them blaming the main character for all the misfortune that happens to them. And it's your job to help them understand and attain the power of true familial love. While this isn't something that happens in the real world, and redemption arcs that go hand in hand with family abuse can often come off as somewhat trite, iffy, triggering, or touchy, especially in fictitious scenarios. The main character's abuse seemed to have been handled pretty well compared to other characters in other series, in my opinion. In the end, the Unlosing Ranger defeats Dark Death Evil Man in Bizarro Earth, and the real world, teaching Dark Death, the true identity of the troublemaker hero, that heroes truly do exist only to face a true enemy. With the combined effort of Pure Hiko, a stranger, Dark Death Evil Man, and Yusal, you stop the suit from exploding and destroying Earth, and are applauded as a hero. There you have it, my review of Zeta Hero Project, The Unlosing Ranger vs. Dark Death Evil Man. If you enjoyed my review and want to see more, please leave a like or a comment, preferably one of each. I hope you pick up the game and give it a go, it's hilarious, and not too hard on the scale. Shimei